Hello everyone and welcome to Network Labs. Today in this video, I will show how to configure VRF in a Microtech router. Refer to the topology for this lab. In the diagram, the task is to segregate the traffic of the client from the server devices. Each VRF must reach the internet via their designated uplink or one interface. We will name the VRF as VRF Client and VRF Server. For VRF Client, we will use VLAN 100 with the network of 192.168.2.0/24, while VLAN 200 using the network 192.168.3.0/25. For VRF server. To reach the internet, VRF client is assigned to 1.1, while 1.2 for VRF server. Now let us go to the Microtech router and begin the actual configurations. First, create a bridge for both VLAN 100 and 200. Go to bridge, then add to interface bridge. Next, assign the IP address for bridge VLAN 100 and 200. Create DHCP servers for bridge VLAN 100 and 200. Then, create NAT instances for bridge VLAN 100 and 200. Now, go to ping and make sure that both the LAN and the router can connect to the Internet. The router and both the interface bridge interfaces can now connect to the Internet. But for now, the route to the Internet is via the global routing table. By default, all the interfaces are bound to the main or global routing table. Let us proceed and create VRFs. Click IP, then VRF. Add new VRF. Set the name for the new VRF. Then bind the interface. For VRF client, bind interface VLAN 100. Make sure that the VRF is on top of the main VRF to take effect. Next, create VRF server. Then bind interface VLAN 200. Next, bind the WAN interfaces to their respective assigned VRF. For VRF client, add the interface of 1 1. Then for VRF server, add the interface of 1-2. Next step, go to the routing table and edit each one interface. By the way, in production environment, Make sure to have a backup interface for management once the main IP is assigned to any VRF. The connection will be disconnected. For 1-1, one -one, set the routing table to VRF client. 
then the VRF interface to 1-1 one -one interface. For 1-2, set the routing table to VRF server. Then the VRF interface to 1-2 interface. Next, create Mangle rule for each LAN interface, then point to their respective routing mark or table. Go to Firewall, then click Mangle. Add new Mangle rule. In Action tab, choose Mark Routing. For the first Mangle rule, select the routing mark for VRF client. In General tab, set the chain to Pre Routing. Then the in interface is Bridge VLAN 100. Copy the existing Mangle rule, then edit the required details. The in interface is Bridge VLAN 200. In Action tab, set the routing mark to VRF server. Now, go to Bridge port then assign Ethernet 5 for testing. First, let us test Bridge VLAN 100. The laptop is now connected to port Ethernet 5 and successfully obtained an IP from the VRF client network. The tracer route shows that it passes through 1-1. The public IP address also matches 1-1. Now go to bridge again and tag bridge VLAN 200 to port Ethernet 5. The laptop also obtained an IP from the VRF server network. The tracer route also shows that it passes 1-2. We have successfully configured VRF to segregate the traffic of our LAN networks. It can also be used to balance the traffic to different WANs. I hope that this is informative to you and thank you for watching.